coming up on Broncos Country Connected. General Manager George Payton shares some insight into the Russell Wilson trade and some of the biggest moves made during free agency. Then I'm joined by head coach Nathaniel Hackett to discuss how some of the newest Broncos impact his playbook for the 2022 season. Finally, the Denver 7 crew touches on the impact Russell Wilson is already having on the Broncos. Broncos Country Connected is next. Welcome inside the Pat Bolin Fieldhouse for Broncos Country Connected. NFL experts already consider the Broncos one of the biggest winners this offseason. First, General Manager George Payton solidified the quarterback position by signing one of the best signal callers in the league, Russell Wilson. Then, once free agency began, the trade for Wilson became even more valuable, as other coveted players consider Denver a destination city where they can win now. With Wilson's help, Peyton locked down 10 free agents who played elsewhere in 2021, adding depth to this roster in key places such as the offensive line, edge, and linebacker positions. The Broncos reunited with offensive tackle Billy Turner, who started 43 games with the Packers over the last three seasons. Defensive lineman DJ Jones was one of the best run stoppers in the league last season, and inside linebacker Alex Singleton was a special teams captain for the Eagles in 2021 while also leading the team in tackles. Peyton also re-signed a few key contributors who played for the Broncos last season. Andrew Beck, Calvin Anderson, and Deshaun Williams all signed one-year deals, while linebacker Josie Jewell inked a two-year contract. George Payton stopped by the studio before heading to the annual league meeting to share some insight into the Russell Wilson trade, free agency, and what he likes about this 2022 draft class. George, it's only been a couple of weeks since Russell Wilson arrived here in Denver officially, but since then, the atmosphere, the mood in the building within this organization, how has it changed? There's just, you know, the players, we don't have a lot of players in, but you feel the buzz, you feel the energy. I mean, it's similar to when we hired Coach Hackett. You know, there was a buzz, there was an energy, and, and this is just even more. And so, you know, there's a lot of smiles on people's faces walking around the building, a little more pep in the step, but uh, it's been a fun uh, couple of weeks here. You mentioned Coach Hackett, loved his exchange with you and him, talking about going through the film, watching Russell, some unfortunate memories from him do, for him due to Russell's spectacular yeah. play. But how far back did you go in your preparation for you know, watching Russell, and what did you see? Well, we had him in the Senior Bowl when we were at the Vikings. It shows you how smart we are. <laughs> you know, we didn't draft him. But uh, got to know him a little bit there, and then throughout his career, he did a good job of beating the Vikings you know, in some key games. and some games where we had the game in hand and he brought him back and including the playoff game. So I, I've unfortunately had the chance to see him up close and personal quite a few times and they didn't work out well. So, you know, use that and, and, and obviously we had to dig into this year's tape because he had the injury and, and compared it to kind of what he'd done in the past. And we, we see the same player, same dynamic player. You said last week about uh, Russell, it's beneficial when I can text the franchise quarterback and he calls a guy eight times trying to recruit. Looking back in this first wave of free agency now, how valuable was he? Very valuable, you know, and, and we have a lot of players still calling us because they want to come because, you know, Russ is here. Plus, they see a foundation, they coach hack it. There's a lot of reasons to be in Denver, the fans, and there's a reason Russ wanted to come to Denver. And uh, so it's pretty cool when a, a player of Russ's stature, I've been around a long time, and you'll text some good players to call someone, and you may hear back, you may not, but Russ, eight times. And that's just, you know, he's obsessed with football. He's obsessed with winning. And uh, that's just one part of it. I mean, he's working now with our guys down in, you know, his house in San Diego, and they're getting after it. So he's, he's all in. Move to the defensive side of the ball now. Yeah. Randy Gregory obviously was the target for you guys on the defensive side, on the edge. You said in his introductory press conference, he's got an arsenal of skill. Yes, he does. What skill or skills impressed you the most on film? You know, just the, the thing that really impressed me is how hard he plays every down. Um, I mean, run game, pass game. I mean, if the run's the other side of the field, you'll see Randy flying down there. But his athletic ability, his length really sticks out, his explosion, his get off, the arsenal we talk about. And not all great pass rushers have an arsenal, but he's very deceptive. He's hard to block. And so we, we look forward to, to him getting after some quarterbacks, uh, you know, this season. You wanted to make an emphasis of stopping the run this yeah. offseason. You do it with DJ Jones, bringing him in here. Coach Hackett said that, like Russell Wilson, he's had some nightmare battles against DJ Jones. 
When you look at him on film, how unique is his ability to stop the run? What's unique about him, and, and like, and same with Randy, he really plays hard, and he's not a one-dimensional player. You know, he's a really good run stuffer, one of the best in the league, but he can rush the passer. You know, he has quickness. He's a big athlete. I mean, he's just not a big stationary. He can really make plays on the move. He's a, he has pass rush. He can push the pocket. He has some quickness. So we feel, you know, he can play all downs, all three downs, and help us in the run and pass. There are some key players returning back to this roster, guys like Josie Jewell, Calvin Anderson at the tackle position, Andrew Beck. Those moves aren't going to get the headlines, like a move for the quarterback, but how important are they? How crucial are they to what you're building? Here? Yeah, they're all they're all really important. You know, starting with Josie Jewell, he was the glue of our defense. Obviously, we lost him in week two. It really hurt us. And just his leadership, his instincts, playmaker, makes a lot of plays. So really excited to bring him back. Calvin Anderson's really helped us out when guys have gone down. He can play left tackle, he can play right, he can start, very athletic. We feel, you know, his future is very bright. And then Andrew Beck, you know, he really fits what uh, Coach Hackett wants to do with our offense. He can do multiple things. He can block, he can play in the backfield, he can, he can align in line, really athletic, he can catch the ball. So we're excited to get all three of those players back. In talking about the AFC West now, you referenced the arms race that is going on in the division. But in free agency, you've also demonstrated patience. You know, last year, for example, Bobby Massey signs on May 12th, ends up starting 13 games for you guys. How hard is it to balance that patience yeah. with, you know, everything that's going on in the division? You just have to stay true to who you are, really. And you can't get too emotional and look at what other teams are doing. So we have to do this. We have a plan. We have a process. And it's really important to stick to that process and don't, uh, don't let it get away from you. So that's what we've, we've tried to do, and it's worked. This is the first time that you've gotten to work with Coach Hackett in the player acquisition process. I know you guys just got done with the interview process, bringing him on board. How did it compare to what you thought it was going to be? How has it gone so far? It's funny. I was talking to someone about that yesterday, and it's been exactly what, we, what I thought. You know, after the interview and, and the energy, the juice, the, the, the intelligence, the football mind, I mean, it's all there. The collaboration and uh, with everyone in the building, not just me, because I'm the GM, but with everyone he comes into contact with. It's been great, really good. More juice, more music. A lot of everything, <laughs> juice, music, you name it, it's here. And uh, it's fun, it's like, you know, it's fun to go to work. You know, it's fun to work with people like that, like-minded people, you know, and we're all pushing for that common goal and that's to win. As we get through this first wave of free agency now kind of look towards the draft, this is a deep draft class that people have, have said at least, in your mind, not having pick, not picking until pick 64. How deep is this class? Can you find quality talent, starting talent, on late on day two into day three in this in this? 100. percent I think this draft. I think it's really good in the middle. So right in our our sweet spot, we have a we have a late second, we have two thirds, and we have two fourths. Mm -hmm. And so I think we can really make some hay in those middle rounds because that's where the draft is deeper than it was last year. Middle and late, I think we can make a lot of hay, you know, a lot of headway uh, with our roster. Thanks, Matt. Coming up on the other side of the break, I'll be joined by Broncos head coach Nathaniel Hackett to get his reaction to some of the biggest moves made this offseason. Don't go anywhere. You know the name. First round selection, Steve Atwater. You know the big hits. And you know the smile. But what you don't know is what it took to get here. Welcome back to Broncos Country Connected. I'm Alexis Perry, joined now by head coach Nathaniel Hackett. Coach, it has been a crazy couple of months from your interview process to today. As you reflect on this process, can you tell us what it's been like for you? I mean, it's been amazing. I mean, from the standpoint of having this opportunity has been so great and there's so much work to be done, so many different things from how we're going about the building, from hiring a staff to the free agency process to putting in a brand new system with so many different people. I mean, it's been, I love being busy and there's so many great things to be done. Uh, the hard part is obviously being away from my family. Uh, I love my wife and my kids and I miss them, but got to go see them this past weekend, which was great, but uh, there's a lot of work to be done and, and, and I love it. What's been the biggest difference for you as a head coach in comparison to an offensive coordinator this offseason? I'd say stuff like this. I think all of a sudden there's a lot of people that uh, didn't really talk to you much and now everybody wants to talk to you um, or ask your, ask your opinion on something or ask a question, which I love because it, it allows you to have your vision out throughout the whole building, not just from the offense. So I love being able to talk with more people, more players. Uh, from special teams to defense. So uh, I think that's probably the biggest difference, just the more people you get to talk to. How do you balance
balance, you know, all the personnel decisions that are happening with things that you actually need to get done, like preparing for off-season workout programs. Yeah, organization. I mean, you have to be so on it from everything, from how you want to handle the schedules. Uh, I'm one of those guys, I, I, I can't operate until things are set and, and done, so I usually work relentlessly until they're set. Uh, so I, I've always wanted the schedule early, so I try to get that out as fast as I can and then just kind of prioritize everything from uh, how the system's gonna work. Uh, you know, having a new quarterback come in, wanting to wait to talk with him and find out what he likes. Uh, so I kind of put that on the back burner until we got him. But then once uh, we got a quarterback, then that kind of jumped in. And then, you know, the free agency working with George and, and all those things, you just gotta kind of prioritize everything and, and make sure you're getting the things that need to be done, done right away. Sounds like you're an A-type personality. <laughs> a little bit. Well, you guys get to start your off-season workout programs April 11th. What do those entail? Oh, it's going to be great. I think first and foremost, it's just getting the guys all together and uh, really kind of from the groundwork, kind of setting the culture, setting the foundation of who we want to be as a team. Uh, so that'll start right out the gate. Uh, I think on the 12th will be kind of our first team meeting to, to be able to get up in front of the guys and kind of let them see me and see who I am because I've gotten a chance to talk with some guys, see some, some guys more than others, but uh, it'll be great to kind of start that whole uh, culture that we're going to try to build here. Well, you and George Payton have been working hand in hand since the moment you arrived. What have you learned about him and his philosophies towards free agency and the draft throughout this time? I'll tell you, it has been so great working with George. I mean, it's awesome. I mean, I think any time that you can have a conversation with a guy, it's unbelievable. And uh, we might not agree on everything, but there's always a reason. And I think you have to respect that uh, from both of us. And I mean, like I said, the communication has just been I mean, second to none. I mean, just, uh, he's a man of his word. So when he says something, you know that he's saying it and it means something. So I think that just makes it, there's no gray area. So everything, you know exactly what you're getting, exactly what's going to be happening. Um, so I think that's all you can ask for as a coach. Well, Peyton says that he's involved in every deal, and that is true, including maybe one of the biggest in NFL history, the trade for Russell Wilson. What do you love about Wilson's game, and how does he immediately impact this playbook? <laughs> we got Russell Wilson. How great is that? Um, no, nah, you know, it's funny. When it was brought across my desk, um, you know, would I be interested? I, I think I just kind of had all these flashbacks of all the different games that I've been lucky enough to uh, be part of with him uh, on the opposing sideline. And I mean, he's electric. I mean, it's one of those things like as a coach, you always try to get that perfect play. You're always trying to um, have everything work perfectly. And when it does, you know, a quarterback usually takes advantage, but it's all those other times. I mean, maybe 40, 30% of the time you're dealing with, it doesn't work out perfect. And I think the beauty of Russell, what he does is he can make plays and create plays and does things on his own. Um, but I mean, just his accuracy, his, his mobility, and, and now that I've gotten to know him, just the type of person he is, the type of leader he is, um, his infatuation with winning, his, you know, he keeps talking about the process. And for coaches, that's what we live for. We love the process. We love grinding. We love watching tape. We love building the system. We love having all those reasons, finding out why something was named one thing or the other. And I don't think I've ever been, uh, you know, I mean, he, he is, he's obsessed with the process. And I mean, he's like us. He's a true coach on the field. He's a, I mean, he's as into it as, as I am. He's in, into it as all the coaches are, and he wants to be part of it. So I think that that's just, that's so awesome. I mean, there's so many great things about him. The Broncos also bolstered the tight end position, the offensive line, even added another quarterback to that room. How has this offense improved over the last week? Uh, you know, I, I think that it's, it's just about trying to get good people first and foremost. Yeah. And then as you kind of continue to get guys finding out the roles, what they do, um, I think that the guys that we brought on are going to allow us to do some really cool things in the run game, in the play pass world, um, which is great with the tight end, with the, with the line. I mean, I think you're always looking to try to improve. And sometimes uh, you, you lose some guys that you wish you had and that they're very good players, but it might not have worked out for whatever reason. Um, but you just got to keep on trying to get good players. Competi the most competition you can bring on a field just makes everybody better. It makes me better as a coach, makes the players better. And so I think the more good guys you can bring in here, the better it is. Well, this defense was already loaded with talent, but then George Payton goes out and he locks down guys like DJ Jones and Randy Gregory. What do those two guys add to this defense? I've decided that every single 
person we bring in, if they've given me nightmares in the past when I've gone against them, I want them on this team. I want them to be part of what we're doing. And uh, Randy has done that for me. DJ has done that for me. I mean, going against DJ as many times as um, I have, I mean, he's, he's an impact player. I mean, you always want to try to get better. And even if you think you're better, you can never get complacent. You right. always have to try to get more guys, like I said about that competition, bring more guys in, more guys that are good people. I mean, and both those guys have been just awesome getting to know them. With the guys who are already here, those who were brought back in, and of course those added throughout free agency, as you look at this roster, what do you love about your current crop of players? I mean, they're very talented, very young, uh, very hungry, very excited. I think those are things that you're always looking for in a coach, uh, for, as a coach. And uh, I mean, I mean, I'm just excited to work with all of them. I think right now it's, you know, a lot of things are on paper. I haven't gotten to know them. I haven't gotten to watch them out on the field uh, and watch practice and how they operate. But up to this point, it's been, it's been great. And I think they're, that, that hunger inside of them to win and, and bring a winning season to Broncos country is, is you, you could feel it. Even when I talk to them, I mean, their energy, I mean, people talk about my energy, but I mean, they're they're, they, I know their energy with me. I don't know if it's because of me or whatever it is, but it's it's unbelievable watching those guys walk in when you meet them, how, how excited they are to be here. Well, earlier this month, you were in Indianapolis for the 2022 Scouting Combine. What was that process like for you this year as a head coach in comparison to years past? Uh, I think the biggest one was obviously the media. Yeah. I think that kind of, uh, and everybody kind of warned you for it, but when you go in there, there was a lot of people. And uh, I mean, and it was that just that whole mob mentality and the crowd and everything. Um, that was kind of the biggest thing. Um, but, and then uh, being able to talk with the defensive players, because in the past, I've only been in kind of the, the formal interviews with the offensive guys. So getting to know more guys and being able to have a wider spectrum of who's going to be out there and available during the draft was great. But uh, anytime you go to the combine, you can sit down and talk with guys, get a feel for how they are, how they, when they walk in the room, how they shake your hand, how, uh, when you try to make them laugh, how they, how they respond to that. Uh, so, so I think it's, it's just great to be around those guys and get a sense for who they are. Well, things are coming together quickly. What are you looking forward to most, most here in the coming months? Getting to be around the guys. I mean, that's why I do this. You know, I think all the coaches, we do this for those relationships. We do those to see these amazing, talented human beings that are great people go out there uh, in front of 80,000 people and, and, and perform. So I think that it's about being around them. It's about being around them, getting to understand them. You know, you always have an idea of what you want an offense to look like, but it doesn't form until really before week one. And so getting to know them both as people and as players. Well, we are looking forward to seeing it all come together. Awesome, Thank you for too. your time. Of course. Broncos Country Connected is brought to you by Ford Trucks. Built better, built stronger, built Ford tough. Things are heating up in Denver, and Empower Field at Mile High has the hottest entertainment all spring and summer long. Gear up for the Monster Jam and Supercross in April. Then kick off the concert season in May with Luke Combs, followed by the Red Hot Chili Peppers, Kenny Chesney, the Foo Fighters, and the weekend. Also, the Denver Barbecue Fest returns in June. For information and tickets, head to Ticketmaster.com. Welcome back to Broncos Country Connected. The Broncos found their franchise quarterback in Russell Wilson. Now the next step for this young roster is to learn how to win like him. With more on how Wilson is already doing his part, here's Lionel Bienvenu, Troy Rank, and Ryan Harris. Thanks, Alexis, and welcome to our Denver 7 segment brought to you by 1-800-GOT-JUNK. And we are back to full strength on the team today. <laughs> Troy and Ryan are here. And guys, a lot of news coming out of the owners' meetings in Florida, uh, talking with head coach Nate Hackett and GM George Payton. Troy, one thing Hackett said that stuck out, the offense is going to be built around what Russell Wilson likes to do, what he does best combined with the concepts that Hackett likes as well. Well, what I like about this is the fact that Hackett has worked with Aaron Rodgers, so he knows what that looks like and how you challenge a star quarterback, how you work with him, and how you incorporate other people in that. The only concern I would have, and it's minor, is does Russell want to throw the ball 30, 35 times a game? Their best offense will still be a balanced offense. The difference with Russell Wilson is when the fire alarms are blaring, you trust him to get the people out of the building. That's when he's at his best. So I love the fact that Hackett has an open mind and he's getting a quarterback who's a basically a pro bowl all pro level that they're going to work together not try to fit one around the other well uh, Peyton Manning was basically the offensive coordinator <laughs> when he was here. it'll be a combination with Russell Wilson coming in uh, Ryan one thing that George Peyton said is that Russell will help the team quote learn how to win 
Uh, some of these younger guys on the Broncos roster have never had a winning season in the NFL. Well, what I love is that George Payton understands that his team doesn't know how to win. A lot of GMs in the NFL don't believe that's a step that you need to take as an organization. And with a roster as young as the Broncos, they absolutely need to learn those winning habits, showing up on time, showing up with the same energy every day. Yeah, you're going to be hurt. Yes, you're going to be sore. But you got to show up with that opportunity and that energy to go win a championship. You know, I hate to keep bringing up Peyton Manning, but it was the same thing when he was there. He right. set the tone across the entire team on how to win. Absolutely. Um, Troy, the big thing in Broncos country last week, Russell Wilson in a helmet <laughs> throwing passes to Broncos receivers. It was glorious. Uh, we saw the videos from Russell's backyard in San Diego. He's got a turf field, a full training facility back there. Uh, and uh, Both Hackett and Peyton said they were not surprised to see this. Russ is starting to get this going before OTAs even start. Yeah, I mean, can you imagine that you're so independently wealthy that you have your own football field and you're going to put the Broncos thing in your own end zone? But I love it. He brings the receivers out. He brings Lloyd Cushenberry back. And they're going to also do this again in July, right before training camp opens. But this is who Russell Wilson is. He's completely prepared. He's completely invested. And as Ryan said, some of these players around here, they think they're working hard. They don't know what it really looks like to get to that championship level. Russell has won a championship. Championship. His legacy is on the line. I love the fact that he's leaving no stone unturned in his introduction to the Broncos. Yeah, Ryan, as a former player, so important. Not just the work on the field, but Cushenberry snapping the ball <laughs> to Russell. Getting the snaps down in April. Yeah. And also the dinners and hanging out off the field to build that chemistry. Well, number one, Russell Wilson's already told the center of your Denver Broncos, hey, you're important. It doesn't matter what we do with our auxiliary players if you and I can't be on the same page. Another thing that fans miss in the Nathaniel Hackett offense, you're going to be moving side to side. So as a center, it really matters getting on the same page with your quarterback. Hey, Russell's telling him, Lloyd, I'm going to go left, but I need that snap a little bit to the left. Or some quarterbacks will say, hey, snap it regular and then go. And that's where you can have that conversation. Well, I got to get over to that nose guard or I got to go help my guard. So that ball's going to be moved. Those little things, those prevent turnovers in November and December. And then you get to learn what kind of guy Russell Wilson is having those dinners. That informal communication is so important to building a championship team. Well, Ryan, right up your alley here. Bronco signed a couple of uh, offensive linemen in free agency, including bringing Billy Turner back from the Packers. Who Coach Hackett just loves. Uh, how do you feel about this O-line right now? Well, they are ready to protect and serve Broncos country. <laughs> Billy, Billy Turner's a fantastic player. And also Coach Hackett and George Payton saying they love his leadership. And I'm just saying, the last time you brought back a right tackle, you won a championship. <laughs> there you so go. the recipe is right as of now in April. Thanks, guys. That'll do it for Broncos Country Connected. But be sure to check out the Broncos YouTube channel throughout the week for more exclusive content out of the Broncos Media Center. We'll see you next time. Broncos Country Connected is presented by Carpet Mill Outlets. Bigger discounts, better selections.